What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. New product day. Hopefully by now you've heard the news. There's a new XR8 speed control in the series. The XR8 Pro G3 is coming out, and we're going to talk about some of the new features. One of the biggest updates is the braking styles that are available. We're introducing a new disc brake feature that uses field oriented control or FOC tech to control the brakes and it gives you a lot more consistent, less speed sensitive brakes. We're gonna jump into that and talk about that in just a little bit. Speed Control also has the new style frameless fans that are super awesome. They move a lot more air and a new fan protection system inside to keep the blades in good health. Speed Control has built in temp sensing for the fan circuit. So you can have it that it only runs the fan when it needs it. It's a great feature. Keep uh, runtime, fan life, all that fun stuff. Speed Control is also a back to our classic size. Previous in the X-Rate lineup, there was three sizes, a small, medium, and a large. We went away with the medium size, and this is the new smaller size. This speed control kind of replaces the size platform that the old SCT was. If you take a look here, they're almost you know, identical in all the different directions for the most part. But I do have the calipers. We'll throw those on here real quick, uh, get you an overall height. That's about, give or take, 38 millimeters or one and a half inches. The length or size is going to be about 55, 54 and some change, maybe 2.15 inches. And then do we do this way? We do not. We get the 36.5 millimeters or about one and a half, 1.44 inches. Yes. Very, very similar size to the uh, SCT platform, which was so popular for so long. All the performance of the Pro version just crammed into this much smaller size now. That this thing is dirty. This is it cleaned up. I've been running this for several weeks, maybe a couple months now, in my 4x4 short course, hammering on it. Works great with uh, the short course applications that we've doing. I don't have an electric A scale at my disposal or a place to run it close by. So we've been running this in a short course. It's been fantastic. Um, like any XC Run Speed Control, it is fully programmable and tunable. There are more settings than you can shake a stick at, and to access those, there is no onboard programming. You do need to either have an LCD programming box, the OTA device, or if you have a tunalizer, the tunalizer has an OTA built into it. So that works with our app, the HW Link V2, that you can download in your favorite app store. Also has some new timing features. The turbo and the boost features have been updated. The boost now allows some uh, kind of automatic tuning from the speed control to keep you safe, less things to worry about, and the tur turbo has a wider range of tuning as well. We're going to plug in the OTA, check all that stuff out here in just a little bit. This is the current XR8 Plus G2S size. And just to give you an idea side by side what those differences are, if you were to hold them in your hand, it's not a ton. You see they're similar length. The width is a little bit down now and the heights are you know, pretty, pretty similar for the most part. X-Ray Pro G3 also has, of course, the reverse voltage protection built in that all the new popular speed controls have. So we're gonna jump in, we're gonna connect our OTA, open the app and get things going, show some of these new settings. Like any X E run speed control, there's a dedicated programming port. If you don't have a programming port on your speed control, it's generally gonna be the fan port. None of the speed controls in the lineup, except for some of the, like the Just Docs, the early versions, some of the other ones use that receiver wire. OTA, battery plugged in, turn that guy on. That's nice, the fan shuts off. That lights on, got our app open, we tap the link button and it'll jump into here and ask us which OTA. I renamed mine Charlie OTA. If you didn't change anything on your OTA, the password should be all eights across the board, 888, 888. Once it links up, you can go into the parameters to see the speed control settings. Takes just a moment to load. And we're just gonna kind of, I always say quickly, I'm gonna to try to go through all these settings quickly and just talk about what they do real briefly because most of you probably know, but in case you didn't, we're gonna cover the basics. Um, up at the top of our screen here, you got your profile selection. You can pick different profiles that are preset. Uh, out of the box, the production models will have some preset profiles in there. This is a pre-production, so it doesn't. You can reset your profiles. You can export your save profiles to save them in the files of your phone and then import them later to upload to the speed control if you wanna save stuff. Same thing, you use the import to bring those in. And then the most important button of all, the save button. If you make changes to your settings, you have to save, otherwise it's not gonna save. So in the first part, we have running mode. That's where you turn on your reverse. You have your max brake reverse force, so you can control how fast your reverse is. Lipo cutoff settings. This allows you to set it to dedicated cells if you're only gonna run that, or you can do the auto. So if you're gonna run multiple voltages, you can do that. Now, I'm not a fan of that. I always try to stick with one voltage range because that's usually what the motor runs best at. There's not really a lot of motors that run multiple voltages okay. Uh, cutoff voltage is tunable, so you can adjust the runtime out of your battery. Something I like to talk about anytime I bring up voltage cutoff is that 
very rarely is your battery voltage going to match what your lipo setting is on your speed control and it's for a whole bunch of reasons but just don't expect it to always match i won't bore you with that but that's why it's adjustable so you can you know control the runtime if you charge your batteries back up and they don't take all of the milliamps or you feel like you're getting cut off early you can turn that down to deal with that thermal protections you can disable that if you're a super pro racer and you never want your stuff to shut down that's one of the places you can do that same with the lipo i've watched a lot of the pro driver setup sheets and they disable all of the safeties and they just ruin their batteries you know they get them for free or sponsorships or whatever but they'd rather run it all the way out and finish the race just in case uh, BEC is adjustable 6 or 7.4 volts. The smart fan can be turned off, so if you want your fan to run all the time, you can disable that feature. Uh, the sensor mode allows you to run sensorless motors, or if you got maybe a motor that has less than awesome sensors, you can change that to the hybrid or the sensorless mode. Motor rotation allows you to change the forward direction of the motor, so if you give your throttle if you give your car throttle and the motor run or the tires spin the wrong way, this is where you can fix it. And then phase AC swap is so you can move the wires designations on the speed control. You can make the A motor wire be the C tab on the motor and vice versa for super clean wiring. If you don't like your wires to crisscross, this allows that to happen. Just use that very carefully and make sure you understand because you'll blow stuff up real quick if you don't. Uh, move on to throttle control. Throttle rate control is how linear the throttle is. All the way up is the most linear or one-to-one -one ratio. If you turn it down, it's got like a tape delay on the throttle. So if you're real twitchy on the throttle and it makes your car handle poorly, you can lower that to help deal with that. Uh, throttle curve is a cool one. You have linear throttle, of course, and then you have this customizable throttle curve where you can put some points in and build your own custom throttle curve. I, I don't mess with that stuff because, I'm, like I said, I'm a, I like th linear throttle more than anything else, so I usually leave that alone. Your neutral range is your dead band of the speed control. If your drag brakes or your reverse are inconsistent, increase the neutral range. A lot of radios get worn out triggers over the years, and the neutral is not super consistent because it's a mechanical like rheostat or throttle pot, so this allows you to tune around that problem. Initial throttle force is how hard the speed control starts the motor. Sometimes, like when you give your you get a little bit of throttle, the motor doesn't turn over right away. It doesn't respond. This allows you to adjust that. It's kind of like a punch setting. You can increase that to make the motor start harder. Coast is for dealing with slick track conditions. If you let off the throttle and your car wants to spin out, even when you have no drag brake, you can turn the coast up, and it allows you to have a little run on, on the motor. So it's very uh, the motor doesn't decelerate very hard at all. Uh, PWM drive frequency is the how smooth the speed control operates the motor. Higher frequency is going to be smoother. This is basically the duty cycle of the speed control to operate the motor. So it's like turning the number of cylinders up or down in, in a real engine. The higher frequency is going to be smoother. Lower frequency is going to be more aggressive. I think I said it twice. Now, softening value and softening range work together. This is a power decreaser. You can take away some of the punch feel between through the throttle range so your value is how much you take away and then the range is how far through the throttle it takes away before it kind of shuts the feature off so if your initial to mid throttle is real difficult for you to maintain throttle you can use this to kind of modify or adjust that feel and then you can also set an rpm limit so let's say you like the punch and everything but it's way too fast on top end you can use the rpm limit to control that now Make sure you read the instruction manual before they do this. It, there's some RPM caveats. It's, it's set up for a two pole motor. So you wanna make sure that if you're using a four pole motor, you have to do some math on the RPM, but it's, it explains in the manual, don't worry. We get onto the brake control. This is where one of the, some of the new features come in. Drag brake force is your overall drag brake. So when you get to neutral, it automatically applies brakes so you don't have to do push brake. Something a lot of racers use to fine tune decel. It's not brakes for drag racing. Don't ever think that. Your max brake force is how strong your overall brakes are. Usually in any RC car in open mod class, the brakes are way too strong. So you turn that down in the speed control so that you can leave this, the radio set to 100 and then adjust the radio bit by bit as you need. Gives you more resolution on your brake feel that way from your radio. The more travel you have in your radio, the more resolution you need to get as far as the output it goes um, and then brake rate control is much like the throttle rate control it's how linear the brakes are if you lower that you're gonna have some time delay again these are all things that help you fine-tune brake response if you on this one if you're feeling like you can't apply the brakes slow enough to make it work right brake rate control is where you start to lower that now these are the fun new ones when you have it set to traditional abs force and disc brake curvature do not work they won't apply uh, and as far as the brake control goes but you will have brake frequency so when brake control sets your traditional you can set your brake frequency and much like the drive frequency it controls the smoothness of the brakes and you can see i have mine set down very low because i like to have very responsive brakes for when we run at the peacock pit because tracks loose so you need them to snap on right away the new feature these foc brakes you can go into 
brake control, switch that to disc brake, and now you have the FOC brakes, and that allows you to use the ABS force and the disc brake curvature to tune your brakes. And it takes away the frequency adjustment, but you get the ABS and you get this brake curvature. And so with your ABS force, you can control how hard it wants to do the anti-lock, smooth out the brakes a little bit more. So as you lower that, you're gonna get more normal brakes. As you raise that, they're gonna be a little bit smoother because the FOC brakes are a lot stronger. So you need to have some of this ABS in there. And the disc brake curvature is like a expo curve, if you will. So if you lower that, it gets softer, you raise it, it gets more aggressive. So it gives you two ways to get around on some brake tuning. So the FOC style of brake, like I said, well, maybe I didn't say it, but it, it's a different sensor operation for the motor and it uses more and it uses more information. So, And now we get down to our timing. Boost timing and turbo timing are electronic timing advanced from the speed control to make the motor faster at the expense of temperature or current draw. It gets hotter, it gets less run time. So boost timing applies the timing amount, the degrees, through the RPM range, it tries to do it evenly as the motor accelerates. So you'll get a time in advance all the way through your throttle range. So if you need more mid-range response, something along those lines, that's where that comes into play. For turbo timing, turbo timing comes on after full throttle. So once you hit full throttle, it starts to apply the timing at the amount that you put in, that's the turbo timing. And then you have delay, increase, and decrease. Now the delay is how long after full throttle before it kicks in. A lot of times people like it to be instant. So as soon as they get to full throttle, it starts to apply the timing. So it's kind of a linear transition. Sometimes you want a little delay in there so that you want to be really committed to the straightaway or the, whatever the case may be before you get into that timing. And then your increase rate is going to dictate how quickly the speed control applies that timing. So let's say you got, in this instance, we'll, we'll say 24 degrees of timing. So then in this setting, 12 degrees per every tenth of a second, it'll take two tenths of a second to apply the 24 degrees. You can make it slower or faster to make it more aggressive or less aggressive on the timing application for turbo. Turbo decrease rate allows you to fine tune how quickly the speed control takes the timing back out of the motor from full throttle. And reason being, you can't have it remove all the timing right away because it'll tend to make the car feel like it's got drag brakes all of a sudden. So this lets you sort of fine tune that. Well, it makes you definitely be able to fine tune it to get the decel how you need it to. Down here at the bottom, we get the data record. It, the speed control records the last run. So if you want to look at it after the run, if something went funky, plug it in right after the run and you can look at the onboard data record and you get a uh, speed control temperature, motor temperature if you're on hobby wing motors because they're the ones with the temperature sensors, other motors do not. Uh, minimum battery voltage that it saw over the course of the run, max RPM and the max current that the speed control saw. So that's the quick and dirty on the new settings and some of the regular settings. If you go back out, if you want to do enhanced data logging, this guy does support the leaving the OT on board. And then you can go down here to data log. You can go to the real time data. You can go to history and you can view from your OTA to see the files that the OTA has saved. I have never done that with this, so it doesn't have any good data in there. But in case you want to get into that, you can. And this does support that live data output. Once you get to this screen, it'll actually activate the speed control and you can see battery voltage, throttle percentage. If I had this hooked up, I could rev the motor. But cool stuff for bench top, te bench top testing. A lot of times people think that they can leave an OTA installed and drive the car on the track. Bluetooth doesn't have that much range, unfortunately, so that doesn't really work. Well, there you have it, folks. A quick look at the new XR8 Pro G3. I have my standard production samples on their way to me. I'll be doing, doing a full unboxing, feature rundown, install, all that fun stuff. Of course, there will be a link in the description that has all the hard details and get one ordered, pre-order, all that stuff is underway. These will be available very soon and I'll have a link in the description for all of that fun stuff. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please send us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. If you didn't know, we do have a podcast. It's called RC Stuff Powered by Hobby Wing. It airs the first and third Friday of the month and each and every episode we give away a free Hobby Wing combo. To find out how to enter to win, all you have to do is listen to an episode, look up RC Stuff Powered by Hobby Wing on your favorite podcast service. And as always, folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Charlie Show, new every Tuesday right here on the Hobby Wing official YouTube channel. We will see you all next time.